And I want to bring in uh, from Kharkiv in Ukraine, Canadian journalist Finn Depensier. He works for Palladium Magazine. Finn, I know you were on with Evan Solomon uh, yesterday, giving us an idea of what's unfolding. Tell us how it is now, some 24 hours later, and what you're hearing and seeing. Yeah, so the city is still held by Ukraine. This is uh, Kharkiv, Ukrainian's, uh, Ukraine's second largest city in the Northeast. Um, the Russians are pushing in, though, and we've heard increasingly louder and closer shelling over the last 24 hours. Uh, the hotel here just called everybody into a bomb shelter, and we were just ushered to come back upstairs. Um, but I imagine that, you know, we, we might spend a lot more time there in the coming hours and days. And so we are also hearing that troops are getting very close to the center of Kyiv, which is, of course, the capital. What have you heard on that regard and any updates from there? Yes, well, uh, like you said, I mean, uh, it's, it's getting, it's, the situation is deteriorating very, very rapidly in Kyiv. Yesterday, the Russian forces pushed into Chernobyl, and now they're actually in the city. I have a number of... Uh, friends there who are journalists that are hiding out in, in bomb shelters. I have one friend who, uh, he, he just tweeted that he's uh, filing invoices from a bomb shelter right now. So, you know, it's a very bizarre experience. Um, uh, you know, we're seeing dog fights and, and, and artillery and, 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 and just the, the full means of war being deployed in, a, in, in Eastern Europe. It's, it's something I never thought I'd see in my lifetime. I'm sure you and many others. And, and Finn, is that part of the sort of surrealness of it all that even many Ukrainians never thought that Putin would follow through on his threats? Yeah, I mean, even those of us who've been seeing the intelligence reports and knew they were credible, it just seemed like it was something that could never really happen. I expected that he was going to invade Donbass and there might be some targeted strikes in Kiev or other countries in the West to draw Ukrainian resources away from the front line. But instead, uh, Putin's decided to attack the country uh, from west to east, the entirety of it. And it's and, and, and as a result of that, Ukrainian defenses are falling very swiftly. But Kharkiv is still staying Ukrainian for now. How long can those forces hold off the Russian troops? Uh, sorry, Jennifer, I, uh, I, you cut out at how long, are, how long can those forces? How long can the Ukrainian forces hold off the Russian troops? I'm not sure. I mean, my guess is that eventually, uh, once Russia starts to um, take over some larger population centers, um, especially if they manage to take Kiev, then they'll be able to devote a lot more resources to this front. Um, I'm frankly surprised that that uh, Kharkiv has, didn't fall like this morning, but the city center is still safe. Like we're hearing artillery and, and missile fire, smirch rockets uh, falling along the outskirts of the city. Um, but it, the, the city center is still safe. But it's it, it just it really seems like a matter of time. I think there's um, two realistic scenarios. Either the Ukrainians here stand down or the Russians shoot their way in. Finn, you seem very calm for what's unfolding around you. And the Ukrainian people still defiant, still willing to take up arms, still, still, still fighting to the end, as we heard the former President Poroshenko say? Yeah, so yesterday we were walking around in the square here and we saw a number of pro-Ukrainian militias getting their gear together and heading out to the front lines. Um, there's no indication that they're going to stand down. But, uh, I mean, if, if the rest of the country falls, it'd be hard to, hard to blame them. Canadian journalist Finn Depensier uh, from Kharkiv with the latest. I appreciate it. Thank you. Stay safe.